So um, my partner and I, Jasper, and I'm Savannah, we have worked on our fourth year design project and today we will be presenting it to you. It's the ultrasonic blood pressure sensor and we worked on this with our other two group members, Glendon and Yudish, and our advisor, Dr. Alfred Yu. So our motivation for this project was that there is inadequate blood pressure monitoring technology currently. This Figmo manometer causes discomfort and pain due to its compressive cuff and additionally, it's unable to perform continuous blood pressure measurements. Conversely, the intravascular cannula needle is capable of performing continuous blood pressure measurement. However, it's an intravascular, sorry, it's a non-invasive um, procedure due to the intravascular insertion. Our proposed solution is to measure the time variant ulnar artery diameter and blood velocity using Pezio electric ultrasound transducers and complementary hardware and software and use these measured values to calculate blood pressure. And we would use, we would calculate the blood pressure by finding fundamental hemodynamic concepts and equations and using these to create a novel software algorithm. So our objectives are to create a sensor that is safe to operate, comfortable and non-compressive, automated and user-friendly, non-invasive, and accurate and precise, and we would like it to continuously be able to measure blood pressure. So prior to going into the details of the design of our sensor, we'd first like to provide some theory. So transducers are made using piezoelectric material, which is able to undergo piezoelectric effect and inverse piezoelectric effect which means that it can convert mechanical or vibrational energy to electrical energy and vice versa. So for example, as you can see here, for the transmitter, it, takes, it has an input of an AC electrical signal and it outputs an ultrasound wave. Similarly, the receiver can input, have an input of an ultrasound wave and it can convert it to a, an electrical signal. And this happens at the resonant frequency of the piezoelectric material. So in order to acquire blood velocity, we would like to use something called the Doppler shift, which we can find using a transmitter receiver transducer pair. So the transmitter outputs a sound wave with a certain frequency F1. And it, when it, it sorry, um, it's incident on an object in the blood, such as a red blood cell. And when this occurs, the reflected sound wave that is collected by the receive transducer collects a sound wave that has a different frequency, which we will denote with F2. The change in the frequency is due to the moving uh, blood, and we can refer to this change in frequency, F2 minus F1, as the Doppler shift. This can be used to find velocity with the parameters of C being the speed of sound in the medium, and the angle being, or theta being the angle between the ultrasound beam and the flow direction. Similarly, we can acquire um, artery diameter using something called transmit time. So in this case, we use a transmitter receiver transducer pair where the incident sound wave is emitted by the transmitter and it reflects off of acoustic boundaries within the body. Then these are reflected and the collected, um, and these reflected waves are collected by the receiver. And just a summary of an acoustic boundary, it's simply any, um, interface where the two media surrounding the interface have an acoustic impedance mismatch. And this such example would be an artery wall where the impedance mismatch is between blood and tissue. So the diameter can be determined by the time difference or the transmit time between the receiver collecting the sound waves reflected off of the artery walls as can be seen here. And this equation can be used to calculate the diameter. So for our design, we had four major um, focuses. So the first was transducer fabrication, then data acquisition hardware development, thirdly, phantom artery construction, and finally, the blood pressure calculation software development. We will first start with the transducer fabrication. So typically transducers consist of three layers, which are the matching layer, the piezoelectric element, and the backing layer. The matching layer acts to match the acoustic impedance of the medium that it's being transmitted into. 
while the backing layer is a high acoustic impedance layer that is used to reduce ringing or extra vibrations in the uh, piezoelectric element. So we wanted to use a piezoelectric element that had a resonant frequency of five megahertz, as this is commonly used for vascular applications. We wanted to purchase a piezoelectric disc made from lead zirconate titanate, or PZT, and we found a uh, we found a company that sold these, and they had a thickness of 400 microns. We wanted to verify that this indeed would work, so we um, validated it, or we verified it using Comsol, and we, um, we simulated a piezoelectric element made of PZT, and we could see that a 400 micron thick piezoelectric disc indeed gave us that when we applied it with a certain electrical signal, um, we varied the frequency and we could see that indeed at five megahertz, we saw the most vibrational energy. So we believe that this would be good for our design and we purchased it. So we purchased this five megahertz piezoelectric disc. We then attached wires to the electrodes using conductive glue. Then for the backing layer, we used a mixture of UV curable epoxy and we mixed this with a certain volume ratio of 12 micron tungsten powder. And finally, for the matching layer, we actually did not make a matching layer. We purchased ultrasound gel, and we used this as our matching layer instead. So for um, our fabrication, we wanted to test three different conditions, where in our backing layer, we tested with no tungsten, a low volume of tungsten, about a 10% ratio of tungsten, and high tungsten, which was about a 30% ratio. So what we could see from these, each of these graphs is that when, there, when the volume of the tungsten is increased in the backing layer, it decreases the ringing in the piezoelectric element, which reduces the bandwidth and improves the Q factor. So the best one was the high tungsten impedance one. And we couldn't go much more than 30% because if we put too much tungsten in, it would become conductive. So we saw finally that our high tungsten backing layer transducer displayed a resonant frequency around six megahertz. Onto the velocity calculation, we created a hardware setup to find the Doppler shift, which this is the um, circuit block diagram of it, and we'll go through it here now. So the function generator supplies a five megahertz sinusoidal electrical signal to the transmitter. Then the amplifier collects the electrical signal from the receiver and it amplifies this. Then the mixer takes these two signals from the transmitter and the receiver, which have a frequency, which, have, which their signals have a frequency of F1 and F2 respectively. It takes these signals as inputs and it outputs two new signals with the frequencies that are the subtraction of these two frequencies and the addition. Then these signals are sent to the low pass filter and the low pass filter removes the high signal while it remains, while it keeps the low signal, which is the Doppler shifted signal. Then this is sent to the analog discovery kit, which acts as our data acquisition element. And this is sent to MATLAB where a short time Fourier transform is performed to find the Doppler shift of the velocity versus time um, signal. Similarly, we did the same, we did a very similar setup for our hardware for the diameter acquisition, where we are looking for the time difference. So in this case, the function generator supplied a, a um, five megahertz pulse sinusoidal electrical signal to the transmitter. Then the amplifier um, took the signal from the electrical signal from the receiver and amplified this signal then these two signals were again sent to the analog discovery kit, and the time difference between the two reflected pulses were re determined. To test our velocity acquisition setup, we built a phantom artery since we couldn't get results using our own arm. For the phantom artery, we used a sausage casing to mimic the skin and reduce reflections. However, when we filled the sausage casing, it expanded and that moved the transducers and caused a lot of noise. 
To improve on this first design, we made a second phantom artery, which um, used tubing rather than a sausage casing. The rigidness of the tubing helped reduce the noise, but since the tubing is thicker, there's more reflections. This um, graph shows two signals that, was, that were obtained from the second phantom artery. The blue signal is when there is no flow through the, the tubing, whereas the red signal is when there is flow through the tubing. There's um, quite a difference between these two signals. The blue one is r relatively constant, whereas fluctuations can be seen in the red signal. To validate the velocity acquisition setup, we first determined the expected flow rate through the tubing. This was calculated to be approximately 40 centimeters per second. Then we obtained a voltage output signal, um, put this through our MATLAB software to obtain the Doppler shift. And then knowing the Doppler shift, we determined the velocity. And the average measure of velocity was 39.58 centimeters per second. Unfortunately, our diameter acquisition setup, uh, we couldn't get it to work because we faced a lot of um, issues with the hardware and the setup. But we still developed a mod. We still developed um, a blood pressure model, which used two equations. The first one relates the Young's modulus of the arterial wall skin to the blood pressure. In this equation, E naught represents the Young's modulus at zero pressure, um, and alpha is the arterial constant. The second equation is um, the Moens and Korteweg model, where it relates the pulse of blood flow to the Young's modulus of the arterial wall skin. In this equation, V is the pulse wave velocity of blood flow. Um, T is the arterial wall thickness of the ulnar artery. The density of blood is rho, and D is the arterial diameter. Using these two equations, the blood pressure can be solved for, which is shown by this equation. To test um, our software model, we simulated velocity and diameter as a sinusoidal function with a frequency defined by a 70 beat per minute heart rate. The maximum and minimum blood velocity and ulnar um, arterial diameter were set based on average values found in literature. For this specific case, we set the E naught T and alpha to 4.5 kilopascals, 0.46 millimeters, and 0.017 respectively. The calculated pressure um, re uh, ranges with a systolic of 134 and diastolic of 74. These, the accuracy of these results can't, uh, can't be determined since we use simulated uh, values rather than actual measured values. The model has several parameters which can vary between humans, such as um, these being the E naught, T, and alpha. So for this graph, we ranged alpha from 0 0.016 to 0 0.018 to see how this can affect the blood pressure. And we observe that there is quite a considerable change in the blood pressure by just varying the alpha value. In conclusion, the velocity acquisition setup was successfully developed for a phantom artery. However, the diameter acquisition setup faced many design challenges and issues, and we couldn't get it to work. The blood pressure software was successfully developed and can provide results within the expected range using a simulated velocity and diameter. Overall, we feel that we have satisfied several um, objectives, being continuous velocity acquisition, safe, non-invasive, and non-compressive. However, there are still objectives which have not been satisfied, um, being continuous diameter and blood pressure acquisition, the testing of accuracy and precision, and user friendliness. Therefore, it is recommended to continue researching and developing the diameter acquisition setup. Also, a third phantom artery setup can be made, which, sim which mimics um, pulsatile flow, and this can be used to validate the accuracy and precision of the velocity acquisition setup, and also to test the blood pressure calculation software. From the blood pressure models, since there are parameters which can vary between humans, it is recommended to perform research to determine how each parameter is dependent on a user's demographics, such as their weight, age, and gender. Then afterwards, the software can be adjusted to select appropriate values based um, on each user's demographics for the parameters. We would like to thank our advisor, Dr. Alfred Yu, for his guidance throughout um, our project.
um, Jen Coggan and Dr. John Saad for lab equipment, lab space, and materials, the University of Waterloo for the funding for our project and many sleepless nights, and um, all of you for listening to your presentation. Thank you. It, it's just a continuous flow right now, and that's something that we want to improve in the future by making our third phantom artery setup, that we would want to make it mimic the pulsatile flow that's seen in, in arteries. Yeah, that's something that we would definitely want to improve on, yeah. And is there a difference in your, I guess, acoustic impedance between water and blood? Is there a big right. difference? Or? It's not a very big difference. <laughs> that was one of the reasons why Unfortunately, that was one of the most challenging parts of the project, um, finding um, the transmit time because the acoustic impedance mismatch between blood and um, water, or water is very similar to tissue, it's not very large. So it would be very small reflections, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, which reflection do you mean? So, right. So, what we thought was um, it's just particles within the blood that it's reflecting off of. So, even when we're using water, we there weren't a lot of particles in the water. Like, there's probably metals or something. I don't know. I'm not sure. But um, that's we got a lower reflection when we just use water. So, what we actually have right now at our demo is. We have mixed cornstarch with the water to kind of mimic that there the viscosity of blood because there's many different things that the uh, ultrasound waves are reflecting off of in order to um, collect the Doppler shift. Yeah, we were just using um, a red blood cell as an example, but there's a lot of different things inside blood, and I think it's actually quite com it's very commonly done in um, for measuring. Uh, blood velocity, but it's also done in industries like where they want to measure like um, how fast water's moving inside pipes. Yeah. Thank you, once again. Thank you so much.